Look at that. Chase the danger. Chase the danger. I'd go in there if I could with them. All right. Let's make it his idea to trot. We could do that first by moving him more vigorously, more effort, more forward. Thinking about him working. Think about him like an engine and you're revving the engine. So I'm going to walk him a little faster, a little fast. Look at right here. He's like, I got to trot. This is so much work. So I sit up and I trot. Horses ask us questions. So if I were walking really fast and revving his engine up, he'll bring his ears back to check in on me and he'll ask me, he'll say, do you want me to go this fast or do you want me to trot? And I answer his question by either walking and keeping walk body feel, walk motion. If I want to walk, my hips go back, forward, back, forward. My hands go back, forward, back, forward. Very front to back. If I ride front to back, following and swinging, he should walk. If I walk him really fast and he checks back with me and he says, should I trot? And I sit up, I answer that question. So right now we're walking, I get the life up, he asks me, and I sit up. I'll walk. Ready? I'll trot. And I'll walk, and I'll trot. And one more time. Walking, trotting. Walking, ears back, slow walk. He goes, Jack, this is pretty slow. What does he think about? Halt. So look, at he's asking me. He's asking. So I'm walking slow, walking slow, walking slow. The ears come back, the eyes come back, attention, and he goes, can I halt? So I answer the question. Either I keep my hips moving back to front to walk, and it would be creepy crawly slow walk, or if I'm going really slow and he brings his ears back on me, and I sit down, or I sort of sit, squeeze and release my hands, my seat, and my abdomen, like this. So that would answer his question, because you couldn't walk. So I walk slow, he tunes in, the ears come back, and you stop riding. Now whose idea was it to begin with? Mine. So I came up with the idea, we're going to trot, or we're going to halt. But then I have to fix it up so good that he thinks it's his idea. And have you ever heard the phrase, make your idea the horse's idea? That's like, that's like hor horsemanship 101. And everybody says that. Make your idea the horse's idea. How? That's how. That's one way. Another saying that I love a lot, prepare to position for the transition and the transition will take care of itself. Well, we sort of address that as well. So if I, if I get my horse, if I get prepared, number one, I visualize it. Number two, I get ready. So I prepare my body, my reins, my leg. I get myself ready. I visualize and I get physically ready. Prepare to position. Get the life up. Release the feet. Prepare to position. Get the life up, release the feet. Life up. We did this on the ground. Prepare to position. Bring the life down. Take the feet. Everything we do is that way. You're going to get sick of this. Prepare to position. Get the life up, move my headlight. Take the feet. Take the feet. Take the feet. Life down, get to the emotions. He's got to calm down. He's got to relax. He can't make it if he's not relaxed. Woo, there we go. Look at that. I love that. That's life. That makes you feel good. Uh, so that got to, their feet got to my horse's feet. Look at that. Chase the danger. Chase the danger. I'd go in there if I could with them. Forget the demonstration. I'm going to work on my horsemanship. Always chase the danger. If a dog, a loose dog came in here, I'd do the same thing. But anyway, the idea is you get ready, come up with the idea, 
where does their energy need to be because then they feel like doing it. If you've ever had a horse that's really docile and mellow and slow and you're like, I can't get him to move. People tell me, they say, I have a forward problem and I say, no, you got an energy problem. And then I'll have the opposite. I'll have jumpers and people that have horses that are racy and running off and they'll say, I can't get my horse to slow down. And although they are right, they can't get their horse to calm down. Do you, under you understand? So, we, we address this the whole time we're riding. So if I can get this really good where I can get myself ready and I can get in position and I'm tuned in and I can get to the energy, then I keep saying more life, more energy, more walk, more life, more energy, more walk. He goes, I can't make it. I've got to trot. So I sit up and he goes, thank you for letting me trot. Right? So... How many of you are used to just squeezing the trot? Because we were all taught that. Lean forward or put your trot. And your horse pins its ears. Well, your horse pins its ears because you distracted it, because you squeezed your legs, right? So remember when I was getting his ear back? Remember that? How'd I do it? If I go forward, I want my horse to look forward. If I'm squeezing both legs, it's confusing. So no wonder they poke their nose out, they get resistant, and they go with a, I'll go, but it's, a, it's not real responsive, right? So what I do is I fix it up, I prepare it, and he looks. He wants to go over here, so it's easy to go there. So that's pretty cool. All right, when I'm trotting, I'm very up and down. So the body feel of a trot is much different than the body feel of a halt. That's different than a, a rein back where I would sit up and come back. That's different than if I turn my headlight and I pivot on the haunch. So watch this. I sit up and I'm saying, come more up under me. Come underneath me. I lift my sternum and I come up. More up. There we go. That's a lot of up, right? And now let's come back. I get the ears back. Check back with me and we wind down. All right, now my leg, the function of my leg, it is an aid. It is something that you ride with, but it shouldn't be primary. The leg just kind of hangs down, and it's, it's like an, it's an extremity, and it's like your hands. If you primarily ride with your hands, trap. It's a trap because we're humans, and we're born with a grasping reflex, and when you reach out to a baby, they squeeze your finger. And you're also born in a fetal position. So when people get nervous, they go, it's just something that's in there. But when you ride with your hands, how will you learn to ride with your seat then? If you ride with your leg, how will you ever learn to ride with your seat? So let me explain something. Our center, our core, we ride from the center. And so my arms and my hands, they're just a side, they're an extremity. The, the way that I would ride is I, through my tone, my position of sitting up, and then again, my headlight on my sternum, shining my headlight. Watch what my hands do when I just shine my headlight. And believe it or not, my hands do move, you know? And if I go forward and straight, my headlight's straight, my hands are more square and even and straight. And so if I shine my headlight, look what my hands do. You see? It's the same with leg. If I turn to the right, my thighs and my knees are very important. It's not the lower leg. The lower leg is not that important. Your thighs are. And so if I turn to the right, what happens is my headlight, it starts to put a little pressure on my outer thigh. If I turn to the left with my headlight, it'll put a little pressure on my outer knee and my outer thigh. Now, my outside leg can come back. That's cool. I want that. But I'm not using my heels there. My inside leg can come forward if it needs to a little bit. But just by turning my headlight, that affects my thighs. And I do call that a tuning fork. It's like a tuning fork, if you know what a tuning fork looks like. That's really important. And there's a timing to my tuning fork, to my thigh. 
so if I want to step his left front leg over, I need to know where his front legs are before I could do that. So if I can back him up and I get a sense of where his feet are, I know when to bring my thighs in. See? And he's following my feel, isn't he? Real nice. Real nice. If I back